Hello everyone and welcome once again to Awesome Amazing Life. We are very, very thankful for all the love and the support that you have been showering on us. Today, I would like to talk about the changing face of the business. In today's business world, things are changing at a very alarmingly fast pace. How we do business, where we do business, who can we do the business with? has drastically changed in the last 20 years or so, for that matter, even in the last 10 years. The rapid development in the information technology and its application, specifically in the last one decade or so, has not only changed the way business is conducted, but the very way we look at the world and the life itself. Both business and trade have gained under the wave of information technology with improvement in efficiency, productivity and the bottom line. Productivity improvement has facilitated speedy and accurate production in large volumes. Now, who do we attribute these changes to? While there could be many factors that could be attributed for these changes impacting the business world. However, there are a few key factors that would make it to the top of the list which could be increased in competition, rise in the consumer expectation, consumerism itself, the science and technology, globalization, professionalism in business, etc. Why? I agree that each of these contribute towards it and have a bearing impact on propelling each other. I would like to put a different perspective here though. This is like understanding the chicken and the egg problem. So, before we get into understanding what changes the business world is experiencing and what are the factors causing it, we need to be on a common platform with the understanding of what the term business means. Business is a transaction. Why? There could be a lot of definitions that you could come with. You may say a shop is a business, a factory is a business, a showroom is a business, business is about satisfying a customer, business is about meeting the needs of a customer, customer service is, a, is what business is about. However, I would like to put across business in a very, very simplistic term. For me, a term business means a transaction and transaction alone. What kind of a transaction? The one which has three satisfying criteria. The first one is to have a product or a service on one end. And the second one you need is a customer on the other end of the transaction. Now, when the value exchange happens between these two entities, then there has to be an intent of making profit in between. When these three criteria are satisfied, the transaction qualifies to be called as business transaction. So you need these three, all of these three, and nothing more but these three as the core components for anything to be qualified as a business transaction. Now, you may have components, you may have factors which may propel this transaction to the next level, may give you more volume. They can act as catalyst, but this and this alone is needed for a transaction to qualify being a business transaction. Having established what a business is about or what is a business, let's talk about what business development would mean because business is all about growth, business is all about development. Now, because the main goal or the purpose of business is to make profits, Developing business would mean developing or growing profit, isn't it? Question is, how do we go about it? How do we do it? Now, there are two primary ways where the business can be developed in today's world. Number one, you could do product development because end of the day, that is what the business has been all about all this long since ages and centuries. You develop your product qualitatively, quantitatively. You improve the features, improve the functionality. You give better quality, you give better service. You increase the volume, you increase the diversification, increase what is there in the bouquet of offering. 
the chances of making more profits grow chances of developing the business grows however in today's world recent times there has been another pocket which has come into existence something that didn't exist 15 20 years back has not only come into existence but has also become a more potent a more powerful pocket for business development than the product itself it's called customer development so the business development today has two different pockets you can term them as product development and customer development right business since ages has been all about developing product it was very simplistically thought you have an idea put some capital get started and things will start moving for you and it did happen so but today people are moving or at least wanting to move away from the product development and move towards the customer development the new age entrepreneurs want to be involved more and more into customer development than the product development the question that we need to understand is why so <clears throat> why this shift because let's let's accept even today it's the product that gets sold end of the day then why is customer development seeing more success more influx of the entrepreneurs than the product development the answer lies in the very basic factor that influences the market dynamics the most what is that demand and supply ratio as an entrepreneur you would always want to be involved where the demand is high where you can have unilateral leadership if possible so 20 years back or so product was not available in the market the supply was very very poor and hence automatically the demand was very high and it made sense in those periods to be involved in the product development whatever you made you had a customer segment waiting for it to be available and easy to sell easy to move ahead with but with the time moving ahead the manufacturing has developed there are a lot of players in the market and with the markets opening up globally there is a lot of competition the demand has shifted from the product because there is a lot of supply and it has shifted towards the customer because the supply of the customer has not moved up as much as the supply of the product so the demand of the customer is very very high let's understand that is the first attribute or first factor which has impacted the shift away from product development and towards the customer development which is demand versus supply why demand and supply is the supreme factor that is influencing the shift there are other significant factors that we need to understand the second factor which impacts this movement towards customer development is the fact that cost center has to be managed by the product development guys you understand cost center i'll give you a very simple example to be on the same page let's say motorola makes a phone and flipkart sells the phone who makes money of course both of them however if the phone doesn't sell who loses money motorola isn't it why so because motorola has already incurred the cost in putting up the infrastructure setting up the factory buying the machinery raw material paying the employees etc 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 hoping to bring the product into existence that would sell initially to recover the cost and then make real profits so it is managing the cost center however compared to that flip card on the other end is majorly playing into profit center only so which is preferable of course the profit center right so profit center 
is another attraction why today's entrepreneur is moving towards the customer development. Apart from that, you know, this has been a story since ever product development guy has always managed the cost center. So why such a resistance or allergy towards incurring that cost in today's world? Because of something which is known as the product life cycle. And this product life cycle over the years have been diminishing. It used to be pretty large, but today it is being squeezed in terms of the span it lasts. What diminishes along with the diminishing product life cycle is the possibility to recover the cost incurred in bringing the product to life. And this makes the entrepreneur jittery about incurring the cost. Doesn't want to unless he is 200% sure. Because one thing that goes off can cause him to lose money. Earlier when the product life cycle was large, he had a possibility to rectify the issue and still enough time to recover the cost by selling the product in the market. However, today if things go bad or something goes wrong with one or more features, by the time you fix it, the next cycle of the products are already on the shelf. And to add to the agony of all of this is the speed at which the technology is changing. Earlier technology used to change in a long, long period. But today it is changing even as fast as this. And every time the technology changes, the life cycle of the product is killed, not just diminished. The product becomes obsolete, which puts the pressure on the product development guy to reinvent the whole product. Go through the entire cycle, pain cycle of bringing the new product to life. However, for the customer development guy, it's sort of a bonanza period. Because when the product becomes obsolete, it's existing customers who still hold the older product want the newer product. Even though they might not really need it at that point in time. Understanding of this, wouldn't you agree that today, as an entrepreneur, it makes more sense, gives you more possibilities to succeed in customer development space than the product development? The other factors, it's very simple like government regulations, it could be social setup, it could be a factor as simple as customer choice, customer taste, that could majorly influence the complete dynamics of products and customers. No wonder customer development is becoming a more popular choice for business development than the product development itself in today's changing world of the business. Something that was taken for granted not very so long back is the pivotal consideration for any business development requirement. Today, customer comes ahead of idea, technology, capital, or anything else. Everything is built around the customer. Customer is the premium commodity today. Even in corporates, the mergers and acquisitions do not happen as much for the technology and the product as much they happen for the customer size that one entity in the game is having. An existing customer base today is a premium. It would not be out of place to say that customer is the entity customer as we erstwhile know it has come around a full circle and if there is a product which can be pointed as the costliest product existing, it would be none other than the customer base itself. Classic example of WhatsApp, free for five years and then bought over by Facebook for 19 billion US for what? Application worth a few lakhs. Rest of the price was all for nothing but the customer base WhatsApp had acquired over these five years. And the understanding of this shift from the product to the customer absolutely priceless. 
there are a lot of other benefits like cross-selling, up-selling that customer base existing brings on the table. The existing customer base has a lot of other factors including but not limited to the savings of the non-value added cost required to be incurred otherwise in acquiring the customer itself. The classic example of Patanjali highlights this beyond any confusion. It helped the existing customer base that existed with Patanjali, the loyal one, helped them save the cost on advertisements, promotions, etc thereby helping resolve the dogma of quality versus prices because they, can, they could contain the price. Yes, acquiring a loyal customer or the loyalty of the customer is still a mystery that hasn't been resolved. Lot of attempts have been made and are being continuously made to understand what would help get the loyalty of a customer. Unfortunately, most of the efforts made are based on the discount philosophy. These discounts are offered at either at the cost of quality or by putting hands in the investor's pockets. These discounts can help boost the short term but will not suffice to get the long term loyalty of a customer. It works for the enterprises who are working with the philosophy of build to sell off. But those who want to be in the game for a long term, buying a long term customer loyalty through discounts isn't going to be possible. For the long run, supported by the advancement of technology and specifically the advent of internet, lot of other approaches are experimented with like shared economy and so far are proving to give promising results. One of the common basis of these experimentations is the fact that to make a customer loyal, he needs to be made a part of the ecosystem. A customer in today's world can no longer be lured by gifts, promising coupons, store credits or even discounts. He needs to see a possibility of partnering and benefiting from it in terms of some real profit. He needs to be made a stakeholder if you want him to be with you for a long term if not permanently. While these approaches have their own challenges and are still in their infancy stage being worked upon they are definitely showing to be in line with the requirement of the business world today and if worked upon with the right understanding and intent can prove to be the model for the coming world of business. Giving the consumer an opportunity to make some real profit would help develop trust and also a sense of belongingness which will propel the trust further. This could be the solution of finding a loyal customer that we've been looking for some time now. Yes, it will disrupt the possibility of large organizations viability. Smaller enterprises might come into picture. Lower costs of starting the enterprise might propel more individuals to start to take on the entrepreneurial venturesship than getting into job. God knows this might actually turn out to be a solution for unemployment that we have all been wondering about. How does it all pan out in the end is yet to be seen. And there are a lot of factors I'm sure which will be having an impacting influence of the, on the end result. However, one thing is sure that there are undercurrents in the business world which will change the face of the business today. And as it exists, the tilt definitely seems to be going towards the customer development side. 
Businesses of 20th century are built around the customer base. The product is still a very essential commodity, but the spot of the most important and most critical entity of the business has been given away to the customer base. In today's era, the valuation of a company, an enterprise, or for that matter even an industry, isn't for the product or technology as much as it's done on the basis of the loyal customer base it holds. The maxim, customer is the king, is finally appearing to be a possible reality. If you like the video, do press the like button. For further notifications or such intriguing discussions, do press the bell icon. And if you haven't already done so, do subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. Until next time, Tara.